Well, today it's going to be the cart. Since yesterday we put the cart before the horse, today we're going to leave the cart where it is and we're going to work on the horse. And that is, we're going to discuss, or I'm going to discuss, there's nobody here in the room with me. I don't know why we ham radio operators always say we when we mean me or them or who. All right, so I want to show you how to remove the two solid state components from the board. This is the board that I repaired yesterday. This is the board that has the new power transistor and the new sensing transistor that yesterday I soldered those onto this board. So today, let's pretend that this is a, a board that you've taken off of your bus now and you want to check these components. There are various instructions regarding how to do this, but I think the only real way to test these components accurately so that the effects of the other components on this board do not affect the readings of the two transistors. I'm going to remove them from the board. So let's say this is your board and let's say that now you are prepared to do this kind of work because you have purchased one of these solder removal tools. Solder is removed by placing this hot tip on the wire through the printed circuit board. You are going to hold this plunger like this, squeeze tight, while you place the opening of the, the, of the tip momentarily to melt the solder, then let go of the plunger and it will suck the solder. Where are we here? Where I gotta find the camera lens. There, you see how it's, yeah, the light reflects right where it doesn't need to be. I'll figure this out. There, see how it's sucked the solder out of there? The wire is now by itself. Now I'm going to do it to the second of the three on the small sensing transistor. Again, squeeze the plunger, then center it onto the wire Till it melts the solder, then let go. And sometimes it doesn't work well because I'm trying to hold the board and do this uh, in front of the camera. So once again, I got a lot of it out, but not all of it. I'm trying to be careful not to ruin the component. There we go. Okay. Now the third one. Pretty close. Now I'll take the needle nose and kind of just wiggle these wires around a little bit. That one is loose. There, I just got that one loose. And now the third one. See if I can pull it away from that little film of solder that's 
left on the board. And I can pull that part out. There it is. Now I'll do the same thing. Set that down someplace where you can see it. And then do the same thing with the power transistor. Remember we use the quarter inch spin tight to tighten these two screws that hold it onto the heat sink. And now we're going to do the same. I'm going to do the same thing here. Uh, so squeeze the ball and slide the hot tip over the wire and Draw it loose. See there? Now do the same thing to the other one. And there we have it. Okay, now notice I'm holding this like this and squeeze the bulb and that blows that solder out of the tip. Okay, now let's get back to this. I'll unscrew this. Remember, this is the board that I repaired yesterday, but I don't have a defective board with me. So we're going to pretend this is a defective board. And I'm removing the two transistors, the sensing transistor and the power transistor. What this power transistor does is it carries the signal voltage, the 5 to 10 volts, from this control panel to the alternator field. Okay, here it is. Now, here's how we do tests. You should have a diagram in front of you. I'm going to show you my diagram, and what you could do is you can pause your video, then take a picture of this so you have it. This is the, these are the reference points here. Here is this little solid state device. And this diagram shows you looking down on that device from the wire side. As we look down, we see the collector. I sharpened four pencils and brought them down here so I can demonstrate. I'm going to bend the wire. If we destroy this, it's no big deal. These are cheap. Uh, I paid $9 for six of these, and I paid $12 for four of these. So this stuff is cheap. A regulator is going to cost you anywhere between $150 and $300. For 20 bucks, you can fix them yourself. 90% of the problem with these regulators is these defective transistors. So here's 
with your ohmmeter. See this ohmmeter? Remember I told you yesterday, I'm not, I don't like digital meters one bit. And if you have a digital meter, wrap it up in a nice Christmas present and send it to somebody you don't like. And then go buy yourself three of these. I get these for 12, 13 bucks at Home Depot. This has an R times 10 range on it, and that's perfect for measuring these. So, as you can see, here is the way to do it. Put the negative lead on the collector, which you see is, is the wire to the right. Where is it here? And measure B to E. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we, no, we don't. We put, we put our negative lead on the middle wire, on the base. Base. Sorry about that. The other one, the bigger power transistor, we start with the collector. Okay. The chart says B to E or C. No resistance. In other words, that's open. So test your ohmmeter by touching the leads together and zero. See it reads zero. Now it says B to E or B to C, no resistance. Here's B to E. B to E. And, and here's B to C. Notice no resistance. That indicates that this unit is not shorted. Now we go and put our test lead, our negative lead, on wire C, which is the one on the left, remember? Now, it says C to B should be 8 ohms. And that's approximate. It can be anywhere between 8 and 10, or 5 and 10. Anywhere between 5 and 10. So here we are. There's our reading. It shows 8 ohms. That's C to B. Now, C to E is open. Should show nothing. If you get any reading here, this transistor is bad. If you get anything more or less than 5 to 10 ohms here, the transistor is bad. Okay, the third test is putting the common lead or negative lead on E. That would be the emitter. That would be the wire on the right. The lead on the right. Where are we here now? Come on, get get back in the camera. Okay, now it says E to B should be eight ohms. Okay, 5 to 10 is okay. This happens to be 8. That's Okay, now, one more check. From E, which is where the wire is now, or where the negative lead is now, to C. There should be nothing. It should be open. No reading between E and C, which are the two outside ones. You see that? If you get anything at all, it indicates that this little transistor is defective. So those are the three tests. 
In case you have your camera ready now, I'll hold that up again. If you want to pause your uh, play and take a picture of that. Now we're going to test the big power transistor. This one is a little easier. This one calls for placing our negative on C. If you notice here, C is the body of the device. This is C, the body. And we will check the resistance of the body to E and the body to B. And it should be around 5 to 10 ohms. And again we have 8. A good unit like this, both E and B should be pretty much the same within a couple of ohms. Okay? Now, <coughs> excuse me, if you get any other reading than this, for instance, if nothing at all shows, or if the meter goes all the way to zero like that, it indicates a short circuit. If the meter doesn't move at all, it means this part of this component is open or dead. Now we go to the other terminal, E, which is the emitter, and here we have 8 ohms. So between 5 and 10 ohms there is good. And again, if it shows shorted or if it shows open, it's defective. So this unit is okay. See there and see there. Now let me show you a defective unit. This is one that I pulled off of that board we just repaired yesterday. And I have the clip lead on the common and look at here. There we have about 8 volts on the base. Okay, look at over here. What? Nothing. See that? There's no reading there. That means that the element or the emitter to the collector is open. We're not getting our 5 to 10 ohms here. So this unit is defective. I don't have the defective little driver transistor that came off the board. That was a project that was started three years ago. Now you know how to get these components off the circuit board and now you know how to measure them. Now, part two, what you saw yesterday was putting the new components on. So remember, get yourself one of these. I love these. I don't like those tube type things and I don't like that mesh that's supposed to draw solder away. I like these units here. Remember, let them get hot and there's the opening. See the hole there? That goes down over the wire on the component to suck the solder off. As it's sucking, it's drawing air through the hole that the component wire came through to create a space between the printed circuit board and the wire. So this is the unit I like. Now, if you can walk and chew gum, you can squeeze this. Do it like this to, to blow out any solder that's laid in there. And then when you're ready, get everything lined up. You could put this board in a vise or something. Create something to hold the board. And when you're ready, you squeeze the tube. Then apply the hot tip to the board and then suddenly let go of the tube. I'll do that again. Don't do this. You don't create enough air current. Do this. Suddenly. A sudden 
jolt of suction will pull the solder into the tip here for you to later blow off onto anything you have around. Okay, now be careful with this. They're weighted funny and you can get burned fast. So this ends that demonstration. So this is part one and yesterday's was part two. So anyway, uh, thanks a million. I'll see if I can't get myself in the picture. Bus old man fell here. Have a good day. And now I have to swing it back. I'll do it slowly so you don't get seasick. Working alone is not easy sometimes. Well, there you have it. I hope you like this little jaunt through technical stuff that I did for you. Uh, I appreciate you watching. I hope this helps you with some of your electrical problems. And those of you who are not burdened by this bus ownership thing, or oh, you don't know what you're missing, just think of all the fun you'll have working on a bus every day. Think of all the money that's burning a hole in your pocket that will no longer exist. Think of how wonderful your wife will appreciate you never being around the house and how your kids will forget your name and your dog will bite you when you walk in the door. But anyway, it's a lot of fun. And I'm very thankful, very grateful for my part in this. Uh, I would never have believed how involved I would get working with Richfield Bus Company and Rochester City Lines and the Holter family and all these classic buses. And sometimes I get paid to work on them and sometimes it's volunteer. Right now with all this virus thing going on, uh, nobody's getting paid. Our company is shut down. We're not running any buses anywhere right now. Uh, people just don't want to travel on buses and who can blame them? So, please leave comments. I appreciate every comment and I don't answer them all. I don't reply to everyone. Uh, I could. There aren't that many. It's not like I couldn't sit down for a couple of hours. Uh, but I appreciate the compliments and the good wishes. And I probably will not say thank you to everybody, but understand that I do love seeing from you all. I look at your name and I read your text two or three times and I appreciate everything I get. And know that even if I don't reply to you, I do love seeing you there. So keep them coming. If you have any questions, please ask them in the form of a comment. Then everybody will get to see your question because they may have similar questions, and I will answer them as well as I can. Uh, if I can't, I'll look up the information and present it to you. Uh, the next piece of work will be our 4104 trip, Saturday, June 27th. We took the 4104 down to Rochester uh, for a run, uh, and we want to have one good 60 to 70 year old bus ready to roll on a moment's notice. So uh, I hope you enjoy our journey. We'll get to meet Dan Holter, uh, the other Holter brother. So thanks, subscribe, God bless you all. Phil here, Bus Old Man, W-E-0-K, Minneapolis. Part of me having to get up and walk to the camera. Ain't nobody here to help. Just one more thing. It's the 4103, not the 4104 for Saturday's trip. But we'll get to the 4104 too one of these days. So long.